So in a previous video, I um, it was a time lapse of uh, making this image. Um, it's uh, it was made with a program called Hexels 2 uh, by Marmoset, and uh, it's like pixel art essentially, except that the smallest unit you're working with, rather than being a square, it's a triangle instead of squares, which gives you a slightly different effect than um, you know the the little um, staircases you would get with um, squares, pixel art, you get smooth edges when you use triangles. Um, but then there's other situations where you end up with triangle edges instead of smooth edges. So it's a slightly different look and process. Uh, I got this printed on uh, photographic paper that has um, metallic inks. So when I, this is still wrapped in plastic. When I unwrap this, the color should be a little brighter. So um, the next step then is going to be to mount this on a, a wooden panel. This is a cradled wooden panel, birch I believe. Before I mount it on here, I'm going to paint the edges black. I'll do that in the basement before I try to mount the picture to the panel. Okay, so I got my panel here in the basement and before I try to stain it, there's just a little bit of roughness. I'm just gonna lightly sand that off and the face I might give a light sand. I'm just going to use some, uh, I think this is 150 for my disc sander. I'm not going to bother use the sander. It's overkill for this. This will only take a minute to do by hand. Okay, so sanding took uh, less than two minutes. And I also just sort of rolled off these corners a little bit where they were really sharp, so they just kind of are smoother there. So now I'm just going to let the dust settle for a minute and I'm going to get out my stain. So this is a Minwax product uh, called Poly Shades and it's a stain and a glossy finish in one. I was skeptical that that would be a great idea but um, I had a project where I used a lot of this stuff. I got a little tester can of it and tried it on a wood panel and uh, it actually worked just fine so I used it for that project and it dried to a really nice hard shiny finish which was what I was going for uh, as long as I did a light sanding and uh, a second coat it looked great it seemed a little uh, splotchy after only one coat but that's to be expected I'm just doing a lot of stirring because I opened this can about a year ago and it's been sitting for a while I'll probably spend more time stirring and I will actually painting with it. Do you want to go outside? Okay. Okay, so uh, I wiped everything with a rag a couple times and let the dust settle and wiped it again and waited for the dust to settle. So, uh, and we've got our stain all mixed up here. So I'm just going to use this little brush. It's just a one inch brush. So I'm just going to paint the edges and then uh, I don't care if a little bit gets on the front. In fact, I'll probably intentionally put a little bit on the front face. I've just put this box under there to keep the panel up. Okay, the panels have had lots of time to dry. There's some streaking and unevenness and shiny spots and dull spots, but a light sanding will uh, get us ready for a second coat and then uh, last time I did this it came out nice and shiny and smooth so I'm gonna do that now I'm not sure I may have done three coats the last time I used this stuff I don't remember uh, so I'm gonna do uh, yet another coat I also found one of these little foam brushes. I'm going to try that for this uh, third coat. Okay, so the third coat of paint seems to have worked a lot better. The uh, shininess is more consistent and it's a little smoother. I'm just going to sand down the tops a bit to make sure it's nice and smooth, Where the um, make sure there's no raised spots. And then I'll apply my print. So 
I think I'll attach the picture hanging hardware before I mount the photo on the other side just so um, I'm handling it less once the picture is mounted. <clears throat> so I just looked at which sides I thought were the best, tried to work it out so that the one with the most problems would be on the bottom. I just marked a little arrow here so I know this is the top. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to uh, mark where the uh, hanger, wire hanger screws will go. Normally you come down a third, so this is 20 inches, so a third would be uh, 6.66. So we're just going to come down, let's call it 7, and I'm just going to make a mark, set where my hangers will go. Okay, so I use these little uh, D-ring hangers uh, rather than the screw eyes. So that's about a third of the way down. Your wire should land like when it's up like this. Should be the top of that should be about halfway between there and here. So that should be fine. Right about there. Next, I'm going to put one of these little uh, vinyl bumpers down here on the bottom corners. Uh, that's to lift off the frame from the wall. Uh, it helps prevent moisture buildup behind your picture. Sometimes over time the bottom edge of the frame kind of gets stuck to the wall so to avoid that we'll use these. These don't stick all that great I find so I usually put a drop of my own glue on the back. This stuff is much stronger. Picture. So the image that I made is exactly 20 by 20 inches. These uh, wooden panels they're not exactly 20 by 20. You've got an eighth or if you divide that in half a sixteenth of an inch um, of overhang and that's why my image included this black border. So I have a little bit of room. Once my um, image is mounted on there, I'll trim off that excess with a sharp X-Acto knife. So for adhesive, I'm using this uh, roll and what it is is a, a layer of photo mount glue on a, on a sheet. You just uh, unroll a size appropriate to your work area and you use a burnisher it comes with one and you just rub down on the on the back on the paper side uh, all over all over very carefully and you're transferring this glue to this surface then you peel away the paper you're left with glue then you can mount your photograph or your print on that glue um, you put this uh, sheet down and then to protect your work and then you burnish it again all over all over very carefully make sure there's no air bubbles and that you have really good contact with the glue and uh, then it's mounted um, it's a lot cleaner neater and uh, I think better results than the spray glue that uh, I used to use <laughs> glue I was being super fussy about how smooth it was um, I did a lot more burnishing as I was peeling it off than I have in the past um, the reason I was being so fussy is because this um, print is very glossy with those metallic inks and so if there were any imperfections I think it would really show up on that glossy surface so I was being extra fussy this is actually the part I don't like <laughs> opening up the prints and handling them so you want to make sure you don't have any uh, glue, little bits of residue glue from the last step. Uh, I've put this um, liner sheet on here. This is super slippery and non-sticky. It doesn't really stick to the glue um, as long as you don't put much pressure. We got it. Now. Here. Well stuck on there now. Okay, so now there's a tiny bit of paper around the edges here. So I'm going to trim it off 
with a sharp X-Acto knife. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that little white edge there. That's what I'm trimming off. So now I've got this white edge and I've got this Sharpie paint pen. Not just the standard Sharpie ink. Um, this is oil-based paint. So the edges are done, so um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that.